In this tutorial, we're going to introduce the use of abstractions in the gen patching environment and learn how parameter management is done when we use those abstractions. The starting point for our patching will be the patch we created in our previous tutorial. I've gone through and removed the user interface objects I don't need to keep things a little cleaner. Command double click on a Macintosh or Control double click on Windows on the gen tilde object to open the gen patcher window. Unlock the patch by clicking on the lock icon. We can reuse parts of this patch to create a dual mono to stereo panner. We're going to pan two mono signals at signal rate, so we'll need four inlets, two for audio inputs, and one for each control signal for panning. The two panning inputs don't require on off switches, so we'll remove them. We'll use the multi slider we created last time as a panning control, but we don't need any of the patching associated with it. We start by creating a simple panner using two multiply operators for complementary amplitude control. As our signal pans from left to right, the amount of signals sent to left and right outlets will mirror each other. As one value goes up, the other goes down. The multi slider object in our max patch we used for crossfading set values in the range negative 1 to 1. We can use a scale operator to convert the input values to a range of 0 to 1. Type N to create a new operator box and type in the word scale followed by the arguments to specify the low and high input and output values followed by a 1 to set the scaling value to linear output. When we enter the five arguments the resulting scale operator will only have one inlet. We'll need one scale operator for each audio input signal. To split and control the output value, we'll use the bang minus operator with an argument of 1, which works in the same way as it does in the max world. Inputs in the range 0 to 1 are output in mirrored form in the range 1 to 0. We'll add this operator to the multiplier operator for the left channel so that the channel's output is full when the input value is zero and connect the scale operator's outlet directly to the right channel multiply operator's inlet. We've now added a simple panner to our patch. In addition to needing to add similar patching for the other audio input, it's also the case that this is a common and useful thing we do in patching. With that in mind, we're going to create a gen abstraction that will let us reuse this bit of patching in this patch and anywhere else it might be useful in the future. First, let's select and copy the parts of our patch we want to use. Type N to create a new operator box and type in the word gen without the tilde. The object that appears looks like an ordinary gen operator with two inlets and one outlet. However, we can open the gen object by command double clicking on a Macintosh or control double clicking on Windows and click on the lock icon in the new patcher window to unlock it. Now we'll paste the copied operators into our default gen patcher object. For this patch, we're going to need only one audio inlet and another audio outlet, and we're going to set the panning value from 0 to 1 using a param operator, whose default state will set 2.5. Once the patching is done, choose Save from the File menu and save the contents of this gen operator as a file. We'll call it Seesaw. When you save the file, one will be created with the file extension .gendsp. Be sure to save the file to somewhere in your search path. Now that we've created our abstraction, we can remove the gen operator we just created, and we can load versions of the patcher we just saved using the gen operator. Type n to create a new operator, and type gen followed by a space and an at sign and the word file with no space. After that, type in the full name of the file you just created, seesaw.gendsp. 
the object that appears will have the same number of inlets and outlets we just created, and it's ready to use. We'll need two of the same abstraction, one for each audio input. Now we need to send the output of our scale operators to our abstraction. If this were the max patching environment, we could use a message box, but those don't exist in the gen patching environment. Instead, we can use the gen set param operator to do this. Type n to create a new operator box, and type set param followed by the name we gave to the param operator in our abstraction, xfade in this case. Connect the outlet of the scale operator to the input of the set param operator, and then connect the outlet to the left inlet of the gen operator. Although the parameters in both Seesaw abstractions have the same name, xfade, they're separate instances and they don't share data. Now, let's close the gen tilde patcher and set up the outside of our patch. Connect the cycle tilde objects to the first two inlets and copy the multi slider sig tilde object pair and connect the multi slider sig tilde object pairs to the third and fourth inlets. As before, we're still working with values for our multi-sliders in the same range as we use for audio output. So, we can control panning at audio rates by adding a cycle tilde object to our max patch and send its output to the panning control inlet of our gen tilde object. Presto! Automated panning. That's it. There's much more to learn about patching in the Gen Tilde environment, but I hope these three videos have given you a place from which to begin. Happy patching!